Aggregation is a way of presenting a very large array of values into smaller combined ones, for example, using the sum function. Now, speaking in terms of efficiency, both Tableau and humans process data much faster when it is aggregated. Now, a simple analogy is reading every line in a newspaper versus reading only the headlines. You still get the gist of the story, and you can decide to dive deeper if you wish. <laughs> In this video, we're going to talk about aggregates, right? Or aggregation, if you will. So we've been using aggregates um, up until this point, but maybe I didn't refer to it as aggregates the whole time. So let's build something simple. I'm going to bring in the state. So I'm going to double click that. So I've got the state and I'm going to bring in the delivery fee. So just double clicking. Okay. And I actually want this as a bar chart. So let's bring the delivery fee here in columns again. And there you have it. So we have our bar chart. So what is this actually doing? Well, if you look at this delivery fee, it's calculating the sum. So the total, if you add every single row up together, but it's only doing it per group. Okay. In our particular case, it's doing it per state. So when you think of aggregates, it always applies at the lowest level of detail. What does that mean? Okay. If I split this up again, let's say I bring in interaction method. Okay. So it's split it up again. No issue yet. What it's doing is it's saying, give me the sum of the delivery fee, but only when they've split up by state and then interaction method. So how do I read this? If I take everything, or oh, actually, let me open up the data set. Okay, if I open up this data set and we're looking at ACT, if I filter for ACT, where is it here? Let's say I filter for ACT. You can't actually filter here, but just pretend. I filter for ACT and I only keep that. Then I go to result and I, oh, sorry, interaction method and I filter for just government notice, and then I go to sum of delivery fee and I add whatever's left, that is 270, okay? So it's always applying after all the filtering has, take pl has taken place. So you can think of it that way, and it does it for every single one, okay? So let's get rid of this interaction method for the moment, keep things simple, cool. So besides sum, which is the default aggregation, we have other ones as well. So I'm gonna right click here and go measure, and I'm going to go average. Okay, so that is our average now. So same process, but instead of doing a sum, we're doing an average. So what is an average calculation? And for those of you who are super good at math, you know that the, the result displayed here is actually wrong. All right, I did that on purpose. Okay, so I'm going to do a blank one. So let's say I have a bunch of numbers. Okay, like so, what is the average? Well, the average is the sum of all of them. Okay which in this case is 18, divided by how many individual entries I have. So in this case, five. That is my average, okay? So going back here, something is weird because I know if I look at this data set, okay, and I eyeball it. And this is why it's so important to check as you go along. Oh, hang on, what did I make that huge? So we're looking at delivery fee. And I'm not even gonna read them exactly, but, um, oh, hang on, where do I go? press this one, sorry. Okay, so if I look at the, the delivery fee here on the right, I'm not seeing 270 as the average, okay? They're like $10, $8, $6, $10, $22. So what has happened to my visualization? How come this is 270? Well, the reason is because of this, okay? So because we added that originally, it's actually doing the average of delivery fee, you can see here, okay? So this 270 is actually falling on 10, but the text that we've put on is the sum. So this 270 is actually the sum. So you want to be really careful when you start changing the um, the measures here, because sometimes, yeah, you forget to do this. So what I do is I get rid of all of this, okay? And let's say I go back to sum and I built my visualization. Before I put any labels in, I start doing all the things I'm going to do. So let's say I'm going to do media and let's say I'm going to do some sort of quick table calculation, whatever, 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 right? All sorts of things I'm going to do. I can even do calculations here, plus 10, right? Whatever it is I'm going to do. Once I've settled on everything I've, I've applied to get my visualization, I hold control and I duplicate this one into the text. So I grab it and I drop it into label. And what that does is it ensures that what I'm displaying matches what label I have, right? It's a really nice kind of habit. So then you know for sure the data is always gonna be correct, okay? So let's go back. I'm going to, let's say, get rid of this. Let's bring in delivery fee again. 
Okay, and then let's look at the other aggregation. So I'm going to go measure and I'm going to go average. Okay, so there we have our average. So we know it's set to 10, which means the average value is 10. Pretty easy. Okay, let's look at the other ones. I also have median. So I get, the, I get asked this, you know, what's the difference between median and average? Because some people will say, you know, I've got a data set and they keep coming up the same value. Well, that's probably just like a mathematical coincidence, I would say. However, they can equal, but it depends per data set. So let's look at the mathematics of what median actually means. So if I go into a spreadsheet, okay, I'm going to clear this and I'm going to do some random values. Let's say I'm going to do, you know, one and a hundred. Okay, and we're going to create, I don't know, what's that? Let's say uh, create like 15 values, right? Something like that. So a median looks at uh, what is the middle value when you've sorted them. So let's say I sort this, okay? And I start from one end and the other end. I kind of go like this until I meet exactly in the middle. So let's do that. So I go like this, like this. Okay, okay, oops, okay. So in this case, the median value is 77. The only difference is Tableau does it like that, <laughs> okay? So in some cases, I like to use median. Sometimes I like to use average, and I'll explain why. Sometimes median gives you better information, and actually more often than not, I probably rely on median. Uh, it's less susceptible to outliers. What does that mean? Okay, so let's say I have some sort of visualization okay and i'm gonna just make this <laughs> really crudely but let's say i have some sort of let's say i have scatter plot right so i've got little points here whatever whatever okay and i said to you you know what is the average for this okay you can probably guess it's like oh well the average is probably around here right but let's say you had one particular point that was like freakishly high let's just say let's say it's down here and the other point that we have is like up here okay just one point just one point what happens is your average line will shift upwards right i don't know i don't know somewhere like that but it's going to shift up and you could be going oh that's the average amount of money we make per day but that's not true. It's just that you happen to have one person that came in and bought the whole shop, you know. So in cases like this where you have outliers, it's actually better to use median, okay? Because even if you had that dot up here, you still do the same process. You go highest to lowest. You go duh, 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 duh. and when it meets in the middle, then you know that's probably what happens most of the time. So you'll probably still preserve it like that. So one of the tests I like to do is I have the median. And I have the average and I'll just see how much it shifts. So if I go here and go measure average and I have a look at the visualization, does it change very much? No, not really. Not really, which tells me most likely there's not that many outliers or there's no outliers at all that could distort my data set. So just a little tip there. Okay, the next one is the count. So the count really is simple. It just counts the number of rows that belong to that group. So if I go count, that tells me New South Wales has the most rows of data, okay, followed by Victoria, uh, Queensland, WA, and so on. Okay, very simple. And then I go measure and there's another count. So what does count distinct actually mean? So let's go back to Excel. And let's have an example. Let's say I go Jed, 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 John, John, Peter, 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 okay? If I use the simple count function versus the count distinct function, let's just call it count D, okay? What is the difference in result? Well, a count function doesn't look at if they're the same value or not. It just looks at um, individual rows. So the answer to this is actually eight, okay? Eight rows. This one, on the other hand, counts how many distinct, meaning how many unique values. Well, in that case, it's actually three. Okay, you can see there's three unique values. So this really looks at the kind of the variation in your data set. So here I can go three. Okay, so again, depends on the application, but you can use both of them depending on what you need. So if I go in here and I go measure and count distinct, 
you can see the values have changed. So here in Queensland, it says there's two different values. That means as a unique value, right, in terms of delivery fee, there's two different delivery fees that people generally pay. In ACT, it's only one, right, and so on and so forth. Okay, two more to go. Let's go into measure again, and we're going to go into minimum and maximum. I'm not going to go into these other ones just because they're kind of more a bit statistical. And as beginners, you never really use those. Okay, minimum. What this looks like, it looks at is the minimum delivery fee um, that exists for that data set. So the lowest anyone's ever paid is $10. Okay, conversely, if I switch this to maximum, right, this is the highest anyone has ever paid for the delivery fee. Okay, so those are your different types of aggregates and you can switch between them depending on what you need. And that is it. So hope you enjoyed and I'll see you at the next video.